Well, hello. I'm uh, Mikhail Golovnya, senior scientist at Salford Systems. Uh, what I'm going to show in the next uh, couple of videos is how easy it is to use Salford predictive modeling in a modern banking application. Uh, what you will see is that unlike classical statistical approaches that require you to impose specific assumptions and also worry about the model form and do all of the heavy duty statistics, uh, with machine learning techniques you can actually do it very quickly and you can uh, zero in into the right result right away without having all of that vast knowledge and expertise. The level of these videos is going to be somewhat uh, beginner, so if you're looking for something a lot more advanced we have plenty of those. Okay, so let me get started. And what I have is uh, a typical banking data set. I have it opened in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and it has a bunch of records. So you have uh, the first row stands for variable names, followed by a collection of different records. And this data set, we have uh, tens of thousands of records. And it has to do with uh, uh, describing uh, accounts as either being delinquent or good. So the goal of modeling here is to find uh, uh, certain ways to predict what drives the account going delinquent on what's associated with it. And I have selected a number of key variables that might be of use, uh, revolving utilization on the account, uh, age of the account holder, uh, debt ratio for that account holder, monthly income in uh, dollars, the number of uh, open credit lines, and this is actually a mixture of both uh, consumer and business accounts. Then you also have number of mortgages and uh, number of dependents. So a very simple data set so that everyone kind of understands what's going on nice and easy. First of all, notice it's an Excel spreadsheet, but I only have one spreadsheet uh, called credit here. Uh, very simple form, variable names in the first line, followed by data. Uh, so in order to do the analysis, you can either work with this Excel spreadsheet or you can simply go ahead and save it as uh, what I would recommend, uh, uh, comma delimited CSV file. And uh, this way you can easily work with this data set uh, with lots of tools outside of Excel. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to switch to Salford Predictive Modeler here. And uh, the first thing uh, we need to do is to open the data set and try to see, uh, basically get some general descriptive stats and the descriptions of variables. So I have this file open, open data file. I already positioned myself inside of the training folder. Uh, here, notice files of type. I picked ASCII 2 CSV. And you also have all the alternatives in case you're interested. Uh, Credit.csv is here. And uh, when I click Open, it shows me, again, what we already know uh, in general. But now you see more details. You see the list of variables. And you also see that the data set has 108,376 uh, different individual data records. Again, our goal here is to model uh, delinquency based on all of the remaining variables other than some ID variable that is just used to identify records. Now, before I do any modeling, first of all, I want to have a better look at the variables themselves. Uh, well, you can always click on the press, uh, press this View Data button to see the inside of the data once again so that you can always remind yourself the type and nature of variables that you use. Or alternatively, if you go view uh, open activity win window here, uh, you can generate graphs and stats. And I would always recommend with any data set that you study, you should always have that information handy and available. So I'm going to click activity, graphs. Here I have the same list of variables as, as before. So I'm going to highlight them all. Click select variables. Uh, remove. ID variable because uh, I don't want to have uh, that information uh, for now. And uh, after I press generate charts, it does the scanning of the data, assembles all of the information, and communicates it back in form of a simple display. Now what you have here is a collection of uh, histograms describing uh, every variable of interest. So, for example, age here is nicely distributed with the mean or median in between 40 and 60. 
uh, each individual uh, uh, bar represents the number of observations that fall within the specific boundaries. Uh, here, the delinquent is the target variable. As you can see, we have uh, some small uh, percentage of delinquent accounts uh, compared to the, the main bulk. And of course, again, we're interested in modeling delinquency based on all of the available data. Uh, monthly income, nice uh, distribution over here. Number of dependents, typically it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, as far as number of mortgages goes, you have 0, 2, 4, up to 6. And the number of open lines varies between those numbers. So keep that information handy because it's useful to have uh, all of those descriptions uh, for your records. Uh, also, in addition to that display, there is another uh, display that's automatically generated for you. It's called Descriptive Stats. And here you get the same list of records. And you can also see some simple measures like min, max, percentiles, numbers, distinct levels, percent missing values, and number of missing values, and so on and so forth. If you are not, uh, if you are interested in gathering more information, you can always switch to full display and study all of those individual variables in numeric form uh, one at a time. Okay, so that's the data setup. That's the uh, banking, uh, typical banking situation that uh, many of you might experience. And now let's see how we can model it, which will be the subject of the next video.